Hello, welcome back. So here we're going to go through um, something very, very similar to the previous video. This time we're going to look at how to do single population tests uh, on a mean uh, where we don't know what the population standard deviation is. So previous video, we went through how to perform a Z test where we know sigma. Here we're going to go through a T test where we do not know sigma. We do not know the population standard deviation. It is incredibly similar. I've left all the same nonsense up here from the previous video because everything that we're going to do here is extremely similar. I'm even leaving up the same data set that we worked with in that previous video because the command that we're going to use is exactly the same. So I'll even use the same data. I'll just copy this over just because it doesn't matter what data I use because again the purpose here is process. How do we get results? Not talking here about what those results mean, just how do we get them? So I'm going to use exactly the same command. I'm going to copy my labels over from here because the command that I'm going to use is the same one. So it's going to give me the same type of output. If you watched that previous video, you saw how here we use that Z test command and we discussed how that results in a upper tail probability. So here I'm going to use that same command. Now I know you're saying, but wait, I thought we were doing a T test. Well, we are. The Z test command actually allows us to do two types of test, either a Z test or a T test. You'll see when I enter that command in the command bar, it's asking for the array, which is my sample. It's asking for X, which is my hypothesized value. And then sigma here, you see sigma is in square brackets. That means that it's optional. Now in that previous video, we knew sigma, or at least I pretended like I knew what sigma was. So I put in that known population standard deviation, eight. However, if we're doing a t-test, by definition, it means I don't know what the population standard deviation is, so I'm going to leave it blank. So here I'm going to select my sample for the array. For my hypothesized value, again, this is a value that would be given to you in your exercise, in your assignment, in your problem, whatever the case might be. I don't have any of that, so I'm just making up numbers. Let's say it's uh, 32. I think in previous video I used 30. Doesn't matter. And now I don't know sigma. So I'm just going to close the brackets. If I knew sigma, if I was doing a Z test, I would put it in. I'm doing a T test. I don't know sigma. I'm not going to enter it. And there we have it. Now, as we discussed in the previous video, this is an upper tail probability. 0.99. So what that means is that for my distribution, my T distribution, I have an upper tail probability. So that's this region here, all of this, that is equal to 0 0.99. Now what I don't know yet is that T statistic, we will get that. So similar to what we saw in the previous video, if I'm doing an upper tail test, that upper tail probability, that is my P value. But as we know, I might be doing a lower tail test, I might be doing a two tail test, which means that is not my P value. If I'm doing a two tail test, then what I need, sorry, if I'm doing a lower tail test, then what I need is that lower tail probability. If I'm doing a two tail test, I need to multiply the smaller of those two probabilities by two. So let's come back here. So this is an upper tail probability. The lower tail probability would be equals one minus that upper tail. And my two tail probability would be equals to two times the smaller of those two. I'm going to use this command min, select those two values. Now Excel will decide which one. I know we could do it 
It's easy if you're only doing the test once. Here I'm gonna be doing the test five times. I'm gonna drag it over. So it's just gonna automate those calculations a little bit for me. So Excel picks the smaller of those two, multiplies it by two. So I have an upper tail probability of 0.99, uh, a lower tail probability equal to 0 0.01. Let's come back here. I know I'm rounding a little bit. There's 0 0.01. And then if I'm doing a two-tail test, well, my p-value is going to be two times this one for 0 0.02. So again, like we discussed in the previous video, you need to know what Excel is going to give you from the command that you're using, and you need to know what is it that you actually need. And do you need to make any adjustments to that? So now here I can just drag these across. If I move the cursor over, it turns into a black crosshairs, drag this over, and now it has filled everything in for me. Once again, if you're doing an upper tail test, there's no reason to do what I just did here. If you're doing an upper tail test, there's your p-values. If you're doing a lower tail test, those are your p-values. If you're doing a two-tail test, those are your p-values, okay? You do not need to do more than what is necessary to get the p-values, to get the results that you need, okay? So let's say here I'm doing, a, 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 let's do a two-tail test. So I'm gonna change the label here, make this my p-value. I'm going to make a nice little table. I'm gonna copy this down. Now, I always come in here and I paste special and paste values. If all I did was paste, then Excel pastes exactly what's in that cell. It's pasted the commands. And you can see here it's changed the cell references. And so I end up getting a bunch of zeros. So this is why when I'm doing this, I copy and then paste special. And I want the values from that cell. And so now that's actually pasting the numbers from that cell, okay? Now I want the test statistic, maybe. Depends on your assignment, depends on your problem. Not uncommon to also need the test statistic. Let's just spread that out. Now over here, we use the norm SINV command because we are using the standard normal distribution. Here we're using the T distribution. The command is T.INV. It wants a probability. I'll give it a probability. Degrees of freedom, because I'm using the T distribution, now I need to know degrees of freedom. Our sample size here is 27. It says 29 here, I know, but I have other stuff in the first two rows. So my sample size is 27, my degrees of freedom, 26. Done, or am I? I just made a mistake, right? I gave it as a probability my p-value. That p-value is the p-value for a two-tailed test, which means that that p-value is double. It's twice the probability that actually corresponds with my test statistic. My test statistic corresponds with not a p-value, sorry, my test statistic corresponds not with a probability of 0.02. That's the p-value, yes. But my test statistic corresponds with a probability from that distribution of 0.01. So if I want this test statistic, I need to put in that probability, not my p-value, but that probability that corresponds with my test statistic. So I could either say, well, it's that probability divided by two, or maybe it's easier, maybe there's less room for error if I just select that probability 0.01. And there we go, there's my test statistic. Now I can drag that over and, oh, I do get an error here. That's not the end of the world. Except my test statistics are getting incredibly large. 
And so I suppose I've just gotten an error there. That's fine. Doesn't mean anything for us. That just means that p-value is zero to the negative 73. What is that? 2.76. That's just scientific notation. It means it's 2.76 times 10 to the negative 73. So it's 0 0.00730 zeros, and then I get 72 zeros, and then I get to the 2.76. No need to worry. My test statistic is simply enormous, is all that we need to say there. Okay, so that's it. We're good. If your instructor isn't happy with that um, result, then you would need to calculate it either by hand or by inputting the formula for that test statistic into Excel. I'm not going to cover it here because this is not something that is ever going to come up. The only reason it's coming up here in this example is because I've made up a data set that I'm working with. I've made up a hypothesized value. And so that's what's giving rise to this funny result. So here I've got my p-values, my test statistics. If you're going to be reporting these in a Word document, I would pull down some labels. I would make this into a nice little table. And there you have it. There's your results for a t-test on a single population mean. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope that that was helpful. Uh, next video, I think we'll go through and look at how to do single population tests on proportions. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.